Hello everyone, this is Peter from the Division of Medical Image Computing at the Germ Cancer Research Center. Today I'm going to present you work done by Fabian Isense, Paul Jäger, Klaus Meyerhein and myself. Um, I'm going to talk about how the main shift in cardiac MRI might lead to impairment of automatic segmentations. Before I start, I'd like to thank the BBM chair for giving us the opportunity to present our work. So let's start with an example where domain shifts may lead problems in clinical applications of fully automatic segmentation tools. So assume you have a hospital that wants to automize the generation of automatic segmentations. Usually what is done is that a data set, a in-house data set is curated and manually annotated. And then this data set is used to train a network that will be able to learn from these images and then in future perform um, segmentations on its own. This process, however, is time consuming, costly and prone to iterative variability. Instead of repeating this procedure at every center, it would be desirable to reuse a network that was trained at a center, say it was trained at the blue center, but the pink center can just reuse it. Unfortunately, it is not well understood how well this network will perform in, a, in another center, so that is on data from another domain. In our study to simulate domain shifts, we'll use the data from the multi-center, multi-vendor, and multi-disease Cardiac Image Segmentation Challenge, or short M&M Challenge, that was held at the MIKAI 2020. The training set comprises 100, 150 patients um, from three different sites, and the data was acquired using two different scanner vendors. Our main goal was to find a tool that would robustly segment cardiac MRI images, even for domains that were previously unseen. But we also wanted to make sure that it's a simple and easy to reduce approach. And therefore, we looked into publicly available segmentation frameworks, and we wanted to modify them with standard augmentation techniques or things that were well tested. And with this tool at hand, we wanted to explore the effect of different hyperparameter settings on the robustness of our segmentation. This approach should allow others to reproduce our work without advanced coding skills or longer deployment phases. For this purpose, we decided to use the NN unit that has shown state-of-the-art results on a variety of medical segmentation tests and comes with a great out-of-box usability. In order to study the segmentation robustness on previously unseen domains, we split the training data that comprises images from two different scanners in half. And we, in the following, we'll refer to these scanners as scanner A and B. And so both data splits had 75 patients. With this data split, we had then the possibility to train our network in a cross scenario. And that means that during the training, data from say only when their A was available and the evaluation was done on images from when their B and they were not seen during training. And this training was done in both directions. So if we now look at the first scenario, so that is train a network on images from vendor A and then evaluate them on images from vendor B. We get a mean uh, die score of around 0 0.85. So that's not quite state of the art, but that's surprisingly good, especially considering that no code changes were done. However, things become more complicated if we also consider the other direction. So that is train on images from vendor B and then apply it to images from vendor A. Here we get results or die scores that are nowhere close to be acceptable. Now, the first thing we had in mind is that for this 
experiment, we only use the default and then unit settings settings. So the the obvious thing for us to do was um, to adjust the data augmentation, to increase the ranges, to add more uh, data augmentation techniques. And these are the results we got from all the other experiments. Here, you don't need to know in detail what was done, but what we want to show you is that we had good results for one direction, but the other direction was always uh, not satisfying. So our first finding was that adjusting the data augmentation alone was not a was not enough to to bridge the domain gap, but there must have been more to the game. And here it is important to to stress again that no code changes to the NN unit were done, but only to the training pipeline in terms of data augmentation. So the next thing we tried out was uh, that we looked at the normalization layers. So the default setting for the NN unit is to use instance normalization. And as literature exists, that batch normalization might be beneficial for settings where, where you have several domains. And that was the next thing we did. And for the sake of conciseness, I'm not going into further details here, but guide you to our results direct. In this slide, you see two plots. So the left one is for networks trained with 2D convolutions, and the right one is for networks trained with 3D convolutions. Both plots have three categories. So that is intra-domain, cross-domain, and mixed domain. And for each category, we had four or we ran four experiments. And uh, so the cluster again is split into the default NN unit setting uh, with respect to the data augmentation or a advanced setting we call the M&M &M, um, setting. And further, it is split into instance normalization and batch normalization. But I'll guide you through the plots in the following slides. So if we start to look at the intra-domain setting, so that is you train on images from vendor A and you evaluate on images from vendor A. So that's the common setting. And you see that all experiments are comparable. So we, we don't have any benefits from certain data augmentation or normalization techniques. And that's the common setting if you refer to challenges as the ACDC challenge. Next, I would like to tell you something about the mixed domain setting, and that is that during training, we have access to all the domains uh, you might see during evaluation. So that means we train on images from vendor A and vendor B, and then we might evaluate on A or B. And um, we have comparable results to the intra-domain setting. That is probably less surprising. However, what is interesting to see is that several domains during training do not harm your performance. And what we were specifically focusing on is the cross-domain setting. So that means that you evaluate on a domain that was not seen during training. Here we see that first, if you use a more advanced or exhaustive data augmentation techniques, so this is the red and the, the green bar, you usually get better results. And then especially if you pair these data augmentation techniques with batch normalization, and that is orange or red, uh, you, you get the best results. So to sum up, uh, it is for cardiac MRI imaging, it is sufficient to use publicly available segmentation frameworks and pair them with basic data augmentation techniques, even if minor code changes might be necessary. If you can use data from the target domain during training, but if you don't have access to the target domain during training, uh, you should use extensive data augmentation and batch normalization. I would like to thank the German Heart Foundation for their financial support to this project with a Kaltenbach scholarship. And of course, many thanks to my group at DKFZ. If you ever happen to find yourself at Heidelberg and need some trip advice, don't hesitate to contact us. We're always looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks for your attention.